What is up, everybody? It's the Michael here, 1987. Here to give you guys a review of The Wolf Among Us Episode 5, Cry Wolf. Now, I haven't played a recent game on the iOS or an iPhone, like right here. Um, actually, I've been playing on it for the last few episodes, but I've been doing gameplay on Game Capture with my blog, and um, like this. And I've been playing on PS3, so I played the entire season on PS3, and that's my full review. Now, you all see all types of reviews out there, giving you high scores or low scores. So don't take my opinion, well, because it's just, just me from my opinion, so deal with it. So, how is Wolf Among Us episode 5? Why Wolf? Does it deliver on its expectations? Is it a great finale? It's one way to say it. Yes, it is a great finale. It's a great way to end up this series. And it's really well done. It, for the type of town it is. It's like a noir type of neo palette type of style, in my opinion. And I just gotta say, it really works. I mean, it pays off, and it fixes the mistakes that In Sheep's Clothing had, with its problems of no progression, and no consequential choices in it. And, but it does, it takes those, like, problems, like the progression of story and consequences, and flips it around. Makes it good. So, how, what does the time take place? And it takes place, actually, right after the events of In Sheep's Clothing. Bigby is surrounded by, um, the Crooked Man's um, Goons and Hit Cricket Man himself. And Big B is just has to bring a task of taking down Cricket Man and stopping this evil, like his little empire of death and all his crooked ways, right? And it actually begins with a bang. It's like type of school negotiation style to it. Um, so it's really well done how it is. And the way I really, the reason why I really like this episode is because it really ends up the game in a really cool way. I can't really say how it is. But I'm going to try to be as vague as possible because you really have to play this level just to believe what I'm saying. Um, so at the beginning of the game, we're stuck in the bang, and Biggie's trying to break, take the crooked man down, but he refuses, and then Bloody Mary comes into the scene, and basically this revolves around Biggie having to take these guys down and trying to get down the crooked man. That's basically how the story is told. I can't really say too much about the story because of the fact that I'm exploiting it for you, and one thing, like, episodes that are hard, to, like, games like this that are short, and compelling stories that are so good are hard to kind of review because they don't want to spoil the thing. In other words, play the game, and if you had the four episodes already, you should play it. It's really well done. So, how does it like fix the mistake that MG's clothing had? Well, the MG's clothing had a great cliffhanger, which was kind of really well done, actually. And the opening is really well done. Well, the opening here is actually really great as well. And none of, and it's just really intensifying. As soon as the game starts, you're really like gripping your controller, or your mouse and keyboard, or your iPhone. I mean, this is like on PS3, 360, um, um, computer, and iOS. This is going to be kind of prediction as well, so cool for that. But I played on PS3, and I was really good with my controller, and I was having like really fun with it. I didn't let it go because it has a lot of dialogue. And to me, dialogue choices are important. It change and branch the decisions on what you do. And it's really cool as I always want my main priority for the game was trying to figure out who was the killer, the fable killer. And that's what I call it. And the fable killer, the surprise, the like the um, surprise twist that they have here is really well done as well. It was really unexpected and I want and I loved how they actually did it. It was unique and it was actually um something you won't expect mostly. It's like a killer you won't see coming. And that's really outstanding is even though this game answers a lot of questions, it also leaves a lot of, you know, answers a lot of questions, also leaves questions for you to solve, and those notably. And the story wraps up actually quickly, and you know, um, this game, I must say, spoiler, um, not spoiler, but a lot of people who doesn't like game queens that are too short, this game is actually short, believe it or not. If you saw my playthrough on YouTube, um, you would know that I beat the game in 71 minutes. That was a speed run, when I, um, my moderate play, my first playthrough. And then I played the game and I was taking around 75 to 80 minutes speed. Now, it's a short game, right? Now, I gave, I gave the criticism to, um, uh, Intersheet's Clothing, the last episode, because of the short length. The reason why is because it wasn't satisfying. It was a good game, you had great choices in dialogue. But there was no real progression in the story. It was short because it also hurt the game, the shortness, because there was no real consequence choices or progression. 
it, it, I didn't feel like it really, the length was too short. I didn't feel like it was really fully invested. I think it wasn't really fully developed into this game. It wasn't a disastrous product. I just felt I was a low point in the series. But Cryo just jumps back on his feet and really takes off. Now, this one is shorter. While in she's clothing, you basically walk around in circles, just like taking your sweet time and it doesn't really progress. In Crywolf, every second matters, literally. There's no timer, but every second you play this game, there's always something happening. The plot is progressing towards the ending of this story, and that's amazing. It's not tweedling its fingers or messing around itself playing footsie. Instead, it's racing to the finish line, and it does it so well. And for me, the length in this game, even though it's short, around an hour and ten minutes in my playthrough, I was still satisfied, you see. If you look at Inchi's clothing, if you played that fully, and then you look at Crowwolf play that fully, they're both short. But the thing is, is that while Crowwolf was satisfying with everything it gave me, Inchi's clothing was not. It suffered because of the consequences and choices, and basically how it didn't really feel like you were really doing anything that was important for Big B. As you really playing as Big B both the entire series, of course. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but you do get to turn some really cool things in this episode. Seriously. Outstanding moments. And basically, there's a lot. There's some intense action moments and sequences. Mostly like a car chase scene. Or, I can't spoil it too much, but an action scene that was halfway through the game with an uh, enemy, or Bloody Mary, who shows up. I'm not going to spoil what happened in the scene. It's one of the best action scenes, or best scenes that Telltale's been doing in a long time. I mean... It's really well done. I mean, some of the scenes of Walking Dead Season 2 are outstanding. But for Wolf Among Us, this was just amazing. It reminds me of a crooked mile in the ending of that game. When you turn to the Grey Wolf. Which is otherwise the Big Wolf that Biggie turns to in the ending of Episode 3. And he loses his crap against the Tweedles. It reminds me of that. Having so much power and then it be taken away from you properly. It was a great scene. And this game has actually a lot of antagonizing choices. Well, not antagonizing bad, but antagonizing and these actually branch out to different endings. You can get multiple endings in this game, a lot more in, like, Walking Dead's uh, No Time Left ending. In other words, this must be, like, possibly, like, three, three ways this game can end. Three or four, I don't know. I only played the game twice so far. I only beat it two times. I played with two different saves, as in, I played with entirely different choices for each save file. So, if I played it for a third time, it might take me a little bit longer to play it, but I also get a different ending. See, this game has tons of replay value, if you have not known. If you have not played the, their last Telltale game, Walking Dead. But this game just wraps up so nicely. So, reviewers giving it 7.5 and 7s, complaining about little things. Stop it, seriously. That's that's not how you review a game, in my opinion. Not even review a game based on what's good. And you don't really you take the bad things pull down the game so much. That's what ruins review scores for me. That's why I don't really like looking at review scores that much. It really hurts my opinion on games, and it really kind of makes me conflicted about what I think. Now, is there any cons to this episode? Actually, yes, there is. Um, there was some slowdown here and there, and this the sound cue would repeat itself like three times, possibly. If you saw my playthrough, you would notice it. Um, also, is the fact that there's a lot of characters in this game. That's not a bad thing, as I like seeing a lot of characters from the last few episodes based on who I saved, or who I hurt, or who I killed, or who I injured, and all that stuff. You can see those all characters played on here. But the thing that, that I was going to was the actual um, Snow White pro um, progression. Not progression, but Snow White was really underutilized, or underused in this episode. Because the last four episodes, you know, um, Snow White been known as a main character, or like a, uh, like a main character for the story. Or, you know, she kind of helps the story move on. But in a minute, she's just known as a side character, in my opinion. Well, not only a side character, but just someone who doesn't really get enough time. Kind of like in how films, some characters who do their best performance get the littlest amount of show timing in films. And, but for me, it didn't really hurt the game too much, you see. I, Snow White's underused points in the game, they're not the best thing. But they don't like make me load the game down to like a 7.5 or an 8 or like a 6. But I found it a little okay as the point where she's in is actually a really good scene and it stretches itself out in the best way possible. Putting a lot of places as in this game, 
there's a scene where and all the choices you've done in the past will come back and bite you in the ass. Seriously. There's points when if you were burnt, like, rinse someone's arm off, they'll, they'll bring it up. If you punched a guy in the face who was, he didn't do anything to you, he would bring it up. Uh, if you beat a guy when he was down, he would, they'll bring it up. It's really like kind of that choice. And it was really well done how they did it. Like I said, this game has multiple endings. But like like Walking Dead, they're always gonna there's, there's some things you just can't bottle in that guy. You're always gonna end the same way. But that's what I like, as Tales of kinda makes us want to replay the game so we can see different scenarios and see different ways the story ends. And I love that. And of course the gameplay, it's the same gameplay we know, a point click adventure game. At some point I felt like I was playing Ellie Noir throughout the entire series. But it, like Ellie Noir, but like a Tilt version. You know, it really did, I felt like I was a detective, it really felt intensifying, and you always have your great quick action, quick time events. In my opinion, Telltale, they know how to do quick time events. They, they know how to do it well, they do a great job of choreography, and the action in this game is, like I said, is intense, seriously, it's great. And the writing in this game is always intensifying as well, and great, so, um, the visuals is always as good as ever with that neon palette, and that noir type of shady look to it kind of reminded me of like the film Drive or John Carpenter's film in the 80s. It really did look good. You know, John Carpenter's films like they're not horror films. And it just looks outstanding overall. Um, gameplay is outstanding, like I said. There's no real problem with gameplay. I do love picking choices. I love seeing different ways games can end. I love seeing how this choice would affect another, in my opinion. Um, I did they have Blue Prompt Snow White be on the use, but that was it really. And this game's ending is outstanding. When I first beat the game, I when the ending when the ending just when the game ended, I was like, that's it? What? I I was freaked out about it. I was gonna get a little upset and rant about it, but then I played it over again. I played it the second time and I played my safe my second save file. And what happened was I kinda understood a little more. Because a lot of people don't say the ending is horrible. It doesn't make sense. What happened in the ending? Um, I'm gonna have to do, I might have to do a spoiler discussion about this entire episode and this entire game in general. And maybe I might have someone I might to do it myself. High chances I'll do it by myself. But the ending of this game is just well done. It's outstanding. The reason why is the game, in my opinion, has been taking a type of noir type of style to it. If you've not played L.A. Noir, you don't know what I'm talking about. But you guys that played L.A. Noir, you would know that it had a noir ending type feel to it. You know, as it was just kind of a little abrupt, but it didn't work for me. Like L.A. Noir, the L.A. Noir's ending, it didn't really work for me in general because I didn't really like how it tried to wrap everything up, but it didn't really do a good job. It. But in Cry Wolf, it wraps everything up so well; it works outstandingly. Um. And not only that, it does answer questions that I wanted to know myself. But it doesn't answer everything. While Walking Dead's No Time Left Season 1, it answered everything for us. And I was happy for that. It gave us a great ending. A great dramatical, emotional experience that you would cry at if you played it once or twice. But I think that's the thing about games, endings, is that I always expect things to end give me everything I know. But Crywolf, when it ended, and it had that type of wrong ending where you have to figure it out yourself, it surprised me. As I played the game over, and I played the entire, I played the entire season in one night. One night. One outing, actually. And what happened was, I kind of understood the ending a little bit more. I actually played it over and over. Played it on my iPad, actually, which I'm recording on right now. I haven't played it on the iPhone because it eats the battery fast. But the more I played it, the more I understood it. And that's why, in my opinion, the ending does not suck at all. It actually is a great ending. And the thing is, though, I don't know if they're trying to set up a, a season two, but if they are going to do a season two of The Wolf Among Us Telltale Games, I'm on board with that. I will buy season two right away. I'll buy it for iOS, I'll buy it for PS3, uh, which console I ever have it for, I will get it. Because I have never read the Fable comics. I did not know really that much about this series, Fables. And then when Wolf Among Us Episode 1, I bought it, it was outstanding, and I was hooked into it right away. It got me in just like that. And I just love games that can link me in, and then leave me with an ending that really just says, what do you think happened? It's not, I mean, it doesn't say, what do you think happened at the ending, but it really just makes you think about it in your own personal thoughts, and what happened. So, 
that's the entire thing right there. The ending is not horrible at all. It's actually really well done. And I really, I really um, say, to, say to Telltale, thanks for not giving up an ending that ties everything up like a good old present. Instead, they leave us to tie everything up and tie up all these sense, you know? So it's kind of cool how Telltale kind of took that risk. And that risk was worth it because I fell in love with it. It's that good. So, what is my final verdict out of 10? My final verdict for this game, I can't really say, I can't give it a 10, you know? Because of the fact that Snow White was not really used to full potential in this episode, I can't give it a 10. But I can give it a 9.5, as in the fact that it's a really, really good game. And if anyone who gives it under an 8 or like an 8.5, they are lying to you. Or they are bitching their asses off. Seriously. How, how can, like, if you play this game and you think it's below an 8, then you need to explain to me why the hell it's below an 8. Because I want to know. Because I think right now, my score is a 9.5 out of 10. It's just as good as a Crooked Mile. In my opinion, I like this a lot more than Crooked Mile because it really does end up everything. And it doesn't make me seem, ah, oh, good. Oh, God. And that's like, oh, come on. I want more. I want more. And this, I was satisfied with what I got. I got what I want. I got the answers. In other words, when the credits rolled for this game, episode 5, I felt like I woke up from a dream, basically. A dream where I got all my answers. But then you ask me more questions. Is that bad to ask questions? No, because I always want to ask questions in my mind. And I want to answer them in my own way. Come back and say, I know what it means. I know it. And this game just does it well. So 9.5 out of 10, this game is. Is it better than um, Season 1's um, of Walking Dead? The No Time Left, their season finale? No, because they're two different games in my opinion. So a lot of people are going to try to compare this to No Time Left. And that's going to be hard to do, because they're two entirely different games. They're two entirely different tones. Even though they're made by the same developer and the same type of genre, it's two entirely different tones, let's be honest. Overall, if you love The Walking Dead, then you're going to love The Wolf Among Us. They may be as few bumps in a row, like um, In Sheep's Clothing, but overall, In Sheep's Clothing is still a good game. I gave it a 7. And a 7, in my opinion, is just to try, uh, take your chances. Not to take your chances, but... Just um, see for yourself, or like a decent game. It's a decent game. So a seven right here, in my opinion is a decent game. Nine point five is outstanding. This game is outstanding. It's amazing. It is spectacular. It is without a draw, just outstanding. It's a magical journey. It has. It's just really well done overall. I don't know how long this video is. I can't really see the timer from here, but my eyes hurt so much and I feel like I'm going blind but still. 9.5 out of 10. Uh, I'll also be doing uh, movie reviews soon. I've been saw two a uh, few movies actually, so I'll be doing movie, movie reviews like Transformers, uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I'll be doing movie reviews on those. Um, and I'll also do a, a video review of the series, of the entire series, not just episode one or episode two, or episode three. I'm gonna do a review of the entire series. So that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm glad that Telltale has really finished up the, this game. Since last year, I wanted to know who the murderer is, and I knew who it was, and I was satisfied. Anyone who wasn't satisfied, that's their own opinion, but this is my personal opinion, okay? This is how I feel like the game should have ended. This, this is no other way this game could have ended. It was outstanding. It leaves a lot of questions, but it also answers a few, a lot more questions. See? So, overall, please like the video, comment below, and subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. My name on Facebook is Michael Martinez. My name on Twitter is the Michael 1997 You can comment on me all the time. Ask me to do reviews of other stuff, possibly. Um, so, that's really it, guys. Have a good day, guys. Well, okay, I don't know what time this is going to be. I mean, it's late. Well, just enjoy. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. So, please really like this video. Also, subscribe. It really would help me out a lot. And also, comment below what comment below really what do you guys think of the ending? Do you like the ending? Do you like it at all? Do you even think they should have went this route? It's all to you. Comment below and actually tell me this stuff. I wanna get feedback on this show. Well, not the show, but these videos. 
because I feel like without feedback, it's me doing things the wrong way, and I don't want to do things the wrong way. So, yeah, that's how I go. So, overall, 9.5 out of 10. Do reviews of other stuff soon, so bye.